I asked the professor so what? So, this Edo May work is just flavoring, right? And he shoved a flask in my face, shouting, Naive Taro, it's science! First up, Kombujime, kelp curing. You know, wrapping flour in kelp. I confidently answered, Oh, that's just for flavor, right? But he shouted, Wrong! Apparently, living kelp doesn't release its flavor. The umami glutamic acid is locked in inside its cells to live. Osmosis. But when you dry it, osmosis kicks in. And the kelp pulls moisture from the fish and in exchange injects its umami into the fish. An umami trade! Amazing! I also thought wasabi was just for flavor and masking fishiness. But the so professor stopped the reaction like, mechanism hold to the on. Group, then the he starts chanting some magic spell like a little isothiocyanate, a C3H5NCS. <gasps> My head is spinning. Basically, that stuff suppresses food poisoning bacteria. It was scientific wisdom for an age without refrigerators. But what about the tsumi? Sauce for anago eel. That has to be just a sweet sauce, right? I said. The professor just gave me this deep sigh. That sauce base. It's made from the broth the eel was cooked in and its own bones. It's a solid block of umami. And get this. Historic shops just keep topping off that same pot of sauce for decades. It's literally the taste of the shop's history. I'm crying. The science is in the sidekicks, too. I asked, I know Gary Ginger cleanses the palate. Why call it Gary? He just did Gary Gary! Because the sound of scraping it or chewing it is Gary Gary. Yeah. Well, that's it. It falls over. Huh? Then he asked, And so why is a Gary tea and so hot? I guess because it's cold outside. Wrong! The main reason is to wash away the fat of the marrow. It was all good. Hey, chef! Give me some Namida. Murasaki! Huh? Why are you stopping? A customer should never use those words.